Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. My name is Alex. I'm forever yours, the intern. Powered by Incorporating Associates. Today is Friday, January 22nd, 2021. If you don't know what this podcast is about, honestly, it's about self-improvement, meaning myself. Having volunteered to get this off of the ground, uh, this portion of the organization, this piece, this department, the auditory department, I suppose, has become my project, my baby. And in doing so, I'll be using it to my benefit uh, to be able to <clears throat> expand my mind, expand my mind, fix my logic, vent, do so in a cathartic way. You, on the other hand, the listener, can treat this as uh, just a lunch hour, really. It being related to corporate. I gotta show you that corporate love. Pretend, for the sake of argument, you walked into the break room, the employee's lunch room, and you see me there, just posted up, chopping it up with somebody else and you just happen to overhear our conversation that's ex actually what's going on right now i'm talking to myself but in my mind i'm talking to other folks because these aren't all my ideas these are ideas that have come across my desk that have been spoken between myself and other associates other partners uh, a lot of it will be taboo most all of it will be related to corporate uh, some folks call it office politics. I just call it corporate. It's the life, man. It's the life. <clears throat> so in doing so, I look forward to being able to, um, to speak, what is it, unrestrained? Is it unrestrained? But I won't be speaking in a reckless manner. So uh, you'll find, you'll hear, you'll catch me uh, sometimes pacing myself, measuring my words in order to not uh, incriminate anyone with specifics. <laughs> but it's all in good fun. Everything said here should be taken as not legal advice if you require legal advice, some form of uh, professional consulting, not so much for professional image. I'm sure you can do that yourself. Besides, I don't know what the fuck you look like. If you're looking for some kind of professional strategy, some career strategy inside of corporate, uh, holler at your boy. You can catch us on, our, on the website. It's associates, incorporating associates.org. You can shoot us an email there, hitting the contact us button on the page. <clears throat> on Instagram, you can uh, like the page, share the page, uh, shoot us a DM. That's our handle on Instagram is incorporating.associates underscore IA. That's incorporating.associates underscore I A. And um, yeah, I mean, just, <clears throat> oh shit, I got the title for this one already. It's an open door policy, man. It's an open door policy. You see me talking to somebody else, don't be afraid to butt into my conversation because it's corporate at the end of the day. It's not like, it's not like the shit really matters. Corporate, <clears throat> when they first hire you, because I might, not even, I might not even work in, in this department. I might not work for this organization. I'm just somebody you happen to see in the employee's break room. It's not that hard to get in. I might not even, I might have just snuck into the building. I look good, I'm wearing a suit, maybe have a little pin, one of those insignia pins or a badge. I look somewhat official. It's not sleight of hand, it's sleight of life. Slight of, <laughs> hold on, hold on. It's not sleight of hand. What is it, sleight of, uh, could be sleight of hand, I suppose. You wanna call it sleight of hand, sleight of life, sleight of 
face, I just slide right in. And I'm in your break room, chopping it up. I'm here, I'm here, uh, what is it? I visit often enough where I could just, I could spin you, I could spin you a little tale about how I work on a different floor, but I visit the break room here on this floor because the refrigerator is a little colder. <laughs> and I'm not afraid to name drop somebody. I mean, I have access, I have access to the company directory whether I work for the bitch or not. Name drop a couple of names. I've been here long enough. I know who's busy and who's not. So if I tell you I'm here to visit Brian, and Brian's a busy guy, I'm busy with Brian. So you don't have to dig too far before you go run, be, before, you don't have to dig too far before, before we, before we, what is it, rope somebody else in? And at the end of the day, I don't work for corporate, I work for everybody, so I suppose, I can spin this as large as I'd like until I walked out. But that's in the future. My goal, personally, is to help the organization go nonprofit, and that starts here at a personal level. There aren't investors, there's just silent partners. Um, and yeah, the goal is to become nonprofit. The goal is to is to get it off the ground, set up a, a, a foundation under the organization. And if you want to send uh, donations, tithes, tithings, offerings, by all means, do so, because corporate is the future. Whether you see it now or not, I get it, I get it. We're based in the US, made and based in the US, but we're corporate at the end of the day. I, I don't know what we're doing still stuck, trapped on one continent. <laughs> we never should have fucking stopped moving across the West. Look at us now. Look at us now, cucked into believing we can't leave our own homes. Yeah, folks, we're still in lockdown. It's fucking quarantine. This might be one of those episodes where I vent a little bit. Maybe I want to keep it as professional. But what can I say? It's an open door policy. Oh, I was saying in corporate, whenever they drop that shit on you, that it's an open door policy. I like how they how they do it, like at orientation when they first bring you, when they're first onboarding you, giving you your fucking I nine, your 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 I nine and shit to fill out. <coughs> Your, your tax forms to fill out. <clears throat> and uh, and then comes the training, and in the training they're like, yeah, don't be afraid to come to your managers, don't be afraid to come to HR, we have an open door policy, we're like family here. And in my mind I'm thinking like, family, what the fuck? Uh, there's, a, there's a saying, there's a saying, I believe it was uh, Mr. Christopher Wallace also known as Biggie Smalls, <laughs> who said, blood and business don't mix, or blood and money don't mix. Get that shit out of the 10 crack commandments. And he's not lying, he's definitely not lying. So why would you want to pretend that you are family? Essentially what corporate is looking for, what traditional corporate, traditional corporatism is looking for, is the ability to, is the ability to lord over you and then not be held responsible. It's the ability to lord over you and just not be accountable. <laughs> That's essentially like they just want, they just want un, what is it? <clears throat> unadulterated access. Yeah, unadulterated access into your life. To be able to tell you what to do, when to do it, how to do it as their employee, and you have no recourse if the conditions that you're put in aren't up to par, essentially, to even be able to do a good job. If they set you up for failure, but expect you to succeed, my guy, what more motivation do you need to become a corporate cowboy? My guy or my girl, I guess, because, um, any, anyone, anyone could be a corporate cowboy. Go check out our Instagram. If you, if you can wear the mask, if you can wear a ski mask after hours, you can be a corporate cowboy. Ski masks are hot. <laughs> it's 
drinking some water, hydrating myself. I have to stay looking pretty. I'm getting old. My fucking back hurts. I got pain in my knee. The only thing that keeps me balanced is carrying a fucking gun. <laughs> if not, if not, I'll walk sideways. <laughs> oh shit. But it's Friday. It's Friday. I'm I'm looking forward to the rain. It started to rain out here in California, and that just feels lovely. We need it. We're always always in dire need of rain. Can't have enough of it. Can't have enough of it until we have too much. But yeah, like I said, essentially this is just um, the podcast itself is a social project, is a, um, a social experiment on improving my skills linguistically, verbally, socially, essentially. If I can, if I'm able to interview some folks, uh, I definitely will. I know the audio on this one probably sounds a little screwy, and it's because, again, I'm experimenting with the audio. Rest assured that it won't be professionally done. I'm um, recording it. I'm producing it myself. Honestly, just recording it on a mobile device and then uploading it. So if you want high-quality audio, fucking donate. Donate. Buy some buy some product. Go onto the online shop, buy some product, or just donate. A dollar, five dollars. The purpose of donating essentially is any disposable income that you want to throw away, send it this way. I'll fucking show you what to do with it. And I'll talk about it on the podcast too. Any funds that I have coming in, I'll let you know what I'm using them for. I'm gonna be nonprofit. And that's what a lot of folks don't understand is that Money that you donate or money that you spend with public companies, with uh, publicly traded companies, all that shit is logged. That's on white paper somewhere. And, and folks like to think, oh, uh, corporate, corporate, corporations have too much power. Nah, what you need is to get on the level of corporations. Why would you bitch about somebody else having too much power when you aren't in any pos- or you aren't positioning yourself to have the same to equalize when you when you aren't equalizing you have to be the regulator you have to mount up you have to be <laughs> handy with the steel and earn your keep you have to be handy with the steel if you know what i mean Earn your keep. Classic. Classic ass movie. You have to be regulators like Warren G, Nate Dogg. That all start that all starts inside. That all starts inside. If they set you up for failure and expect you to succeed, who is the regulator? Option A, you go outside. You bitch to the um, government, get the labor board involved. Not, I mean, it's efficient. It's efficient because you do little to no legwork. Option B, slightly less efficient, much more effective to get you results and not just to get the company in trouble, get it all shut down and have everybody lose their jobs and opportunities, right? Because then, uh, I don't know, you could, you could get a target slapped on your back just for that shit. Option B, you become a corporate cowboy. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I sound like I'm, I sound accusatory right now. I realize that. So option B, I become a corporate cowboy. I become the regulator. I moderate. I set the standards. I mean the standards for work, the standards for success, the standards for quality, the standards for quantity. And you do it, you do it with the attitude that you are a regulator. It's hard. It's hard because I'm still I'm still young, though I wish I had the respect that older cats get just off top without having to fucking do anything. And um, 
and I had a revelation. I had a revelation on just how much, how much rancor, rancor I harbor. How much. It's not even hate at this point. It's something distilled even further. <laughs> it's like a fucking. It's an abhorrence. It's a repul. Rep. What is it? Repulsion. So, no, nah, not even repulsion. Because I want to draw it in. I want to fucking kill it. I want to bury it. I want to be done with it and then do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at a loss for, I'm at a loss for angry words right now. I'm at a loss for mean words right now, but that's because I'm in a good mood. I'm always in a good mood. I'm always in a good attitude. You rarely find me in a poor attitude, in a poor mood. You rarely find me not smiling. I love to smile. I love to laugh. If you catch me in a, in a, in a mood, if you catch me, <clears throat> hold on, hold on, hold on. If you catch me putting in work, quote unquote, more than likely I'm putting in work on you. <laughs> you didn't catch me, I caught you. And that's just how the shit goes. Ultimately, the open door policy only serves the company, only serves the organization, the corporation, if it's, I mean, obviously it has to be managed right. And uh, management dictates, management pretty much dictates how policy is put into practice. Yeah, the top executives or the founders and wh whoever the fuck, the board might've came up with the bylaws, but to put those bylaws into practice, that comes down to, to the management team. Just like any institution, just like any government, you could have, you could have laws prohibiting murder, mm -hmm. and it's not gonna, that's not gonna stop me. <laughs> that's not gonna stop. That's not gonna stop anyone from killing. You can, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm not laughing. Like, okay, so I did laugh because it's funny, but in my mind, I was thinking, I, I was thinking of a better example, a, a more subtle, you know, more, um, more more relatable, I guess. You could have laws for gun control, but then putting those into practice, good fucking luck. <laughs> ah, shit, corporate cowboys find a way to make a weapon out of anything. Anything. <clears throat> the open door policy, when they tell you that you can come to them with any problems, with any issues, relating to work, relating to family. Obviously, the lip service, the words that are coming out of their mouth are telling you that they do care about how you feel. They do care about how you're getting along at work. They do care about your professional development as they should. Not just talk about it, as they should. They should care. And they should be actively working to help you improve yourself. Why? Because improving yourself necessarily means that the company in turn will be improved by having you in it. It's like, <clears throat> it's like forming a gang. It's like forming a gang. I don't want any sap suckers in my ranks. <laughs> I need straight killers. I need straight dealers and killers. Why? Because I know those I know those individuals will put in the work. And if they have if they have issues, they will bring them to me. Ideally to my face, but humans being humans, you never know, right? But the new age professional deals the new age professional just handles business. Point blank. Funny. Pun intended. Point blank. The new, the new age professional handles that shit face to face. Which a lot of companies don't. And a lot of individuals who work for companies, a lot of individuals who work inside a corporate don't. They've, 
become comfortable. They've become complacent where even though they're not advancing, even though they live a shit life nine to five, nine to six now because they got cucked out of their lunch, not getting paid for it. <laughs> Times have changed so hard, man. <clears throat> they used to be 12 hours, 12 hours, fucking 14, 16 hours, but <clears throat> unions got strong for a little bit. We're able to lobby. Now unions have fallen by the wayside somewhat. Corporate has taken over and now corporate for a while was really strong, something like the <clears throat> 60s, 70s, maybe even 50s. 50s, 60s, 70s, they were strong enough to even go out of their way and purchase whole towns, create towns for their employees. Pretty much, I'm not gonna say, <clears throat> I'm not gonna say, uh, um, It's like a, I'm not gonna say an army. I'm not gonna say like they're militant because a lot of these folks like, yeah, they might have a department for like loss prevention or a, a department for special research and projects, something, some skunk works or, or wet work. I mean, fucking it's corporate, right? There's departments for everything, not just accounting and finance and, and sales and marketing. <clears throat> but that's like the government, if you see where I'm getting at where the government plots a piece of land, puts down on a piece of land, draws their bounds, and is supposed to supply for the people living in there for, for their citizens. And the government has uh, a human resources department too. It's, I think it's literally called human services. And any issues they can bring to them. Kick those up the chain of command. But just like we've, just like, <clears throat> hold on, I'm trying to, I'm on a train of thought, but I'm trying to organize and construct my, my logic, so my logic intact. Again, if, I know you're keeping up with me, but I'm trying to keep up with what I'm thinking and say it in a way that is in order and comprehensible, comprehensible? comprehensible so I don't lose myself because yeah I mean I I can I can I can spin I can spin uh, um hold on I can spin is it a sale or a tell I can spin a tell <clears throat> T E L L I can spin a sale I can spin a tell and walk folks right into the point that I'm, that I'm trying to get across. Just walk folks right into it. Kind of like uh, that old cat, that old military dude with the Fairbairn Sykes knife, the dagger, the old Fairbairn Sykes dagger. There's a video out there of this old like Royal Marine type dude who was in World War II and he's showing you, talks like this, showing you how to use a knife. And when you use a knife, you don't hold it like this. No, no, you hold it like this, just below the pommel between the index and the thumb. <laughs> and that dude, that dude says that when you go to use the knife, you don't stab people with the knife. You grab the person because the knife is fucking like needle point sharp. You don't grab the knife. You don't make the motion to stab. Why? Because it takes the knife, it, 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 it positions the knife. The trajectory in which you push the knife has the knife leaving your center of gravity, which is dangerous, why? Because there's less control the further away it is from your body. The further away it is from your body, the less control you have over it. So you, gotta, you have to be one slick motherfucker to be doing knife tricks, right? And I get it, I've seen them. They are pretty slick, they're pretty cool. But this guy was saying, so you grab the knife like this and when you go to use it, you don't stab forward, you don't thrust. You grab the, you grab the guy and you pull him onto the knife. <laughs> <laughs> you grab you grab the enemy and you pull them onto the knife, which is essentially what I've I've captured myself being able to do now in my uh, discourse, in, in verbal discourse. But I need to be able to break that down even further and understand. I mean, I I, I came up. I, I came up where the shit was do or die, right? And it's becoming less and less of that. Um, 
because I'm becoming, I'm just getting deeper and deeper into corporate. Like when, not when I was on the street, but I, when I was affiliated, I suppose, to certain street elements, when I was associated to, to street elements, the shit was do or die was do or die. You were just pulling motherfuckers onto the knife. Why? Because there were plenty of motherfuckers to pull onto the knife. In corporate, in corporate, it's a little more difficult to see because everybody dresses the same. Everybody, uh, one would assume, has the same organizational goals. And then in interviewing and investigating and being that social researcher, like I've... I've trained to become, I've aspired to be, I'm finding who's the enemy and who's not. Some skullduggery involved. There is some skullduggery involved and I love it. I love it. Why? Because my hands aren't too clean and folks can see them from a ways off and they know, they know I get down. <laughs> After a while, my reputation gets around. They know how I get down. That's what I would like um, to replicate. It's what I would like to, to maximize. I would like to reproduce in other individuals, other younger, older, aspiring professionals. I need them to realize that we're all in the same boat together, right? And if we're not rowing the same way, well, for the most part, we are rowing the same way, but some folks are rowing for different reasons than others. But if we aren't rowing to improve, if we aren't working to improve the condition of the ship overall, we're just gonna, you know, let it run rotten. I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna start you're going to start pulling motherfuckers onto the knife and tossing them overboard. <laughs> uh, but it takes a lot more strategy. It takes a lot more agility. It takes being adaptable. It takes um, planning, plotting for one to be able to advance in corporate and... Um, make moves happen, make power moves. It really isn't all too difficult. And it's not at all different from politics. It's exactly how politics run, but corporate is just better. Corporate, corporate is better because you're not in the public. Uh, you're not in the public eye. Like um, governmental organizations, like agencies and stuff. That's, that's bordering, that's edging yourself closer to politics, to that polit political life. I myself would like it to be somewhat more hybrid, and that's just on personal, um, personal preferences, personal knowledge. Where corporations publicly traded, publicly traded literally belong to the public, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, when an organization is incorporated by the United States government, they are serving the United States government citizens. The United States government has incorporated them, has chartered them for a specific reason. And that reason is bound in the mission statement. That's the mission. It's, it, it, it does sound militaristic, but there is a mission statement and there are bylaws. So you don't think... Your boy Alex is going to want to creep in there like a corporate cowboy and find out who is not towing the mission statement, who isn't, who's violating the mission statement, who's violating the bylaws. You don't, you don't think I'm going in there knife first? <laughs> Why? Because they're fucking business up. They're fucking business up for the rest of us. They're fucking business up for me. They're fucking business up for the people I work for. And I don't even work for them. I work with them. But now, I mean, yeah, I've, I've volunteered. I've become the voice, right? That's what having the cleanest record gets you, puts you out in the public. And I, and I love it. I love it, man. Sooner or later, I'm going to stir the pot enough. I'm going to create a little, bit of, a little bit of current, a little bit of inertia. Hopefully, this snowballs and... Uh, the critical mass from this 
will either propel me forward or I'll get buried by it. But the podcast itself, I know will serve to improve others, give folks a little bit of insight into what love and hate are really all about in the context of corporate. (laughs) Cause don't get me wrong, man. I could talk about this shit for hours, for hours. And you might think I'm talking office politics, but I'm honestly not. Office politics are, are circumstantial. They're from office to office. If you want to talk about that, by all means, that calls for some professional, some, some career consulting. You want some career consulting? Hit us up. DM us, associates, incorporatingassociates.org, incorporating dot associates underscore IA on Instagram and let us know. Obviously it's gonna it's gonna cost to get the consult, but if it serves as therapy just to get it off of your chest, I'm not gonna tell you like just right off of the bat, oh you're right, you're right, oh yes, yes, like like a fucking yes man. No, I'm not gonna tell you like, oh no, you're right, bro, fucking your company has it all wrong. If you're the piece of shit in your company who's not following the mission statement, who's not adhering to the organizational goals to improve your position and the company's, why? Because if you improve your position only within the company out of personal interest, but the company is no better for it. You've essentially enclosed yourself. You've enclosed yourself into a kiddie pool and the company isn't gonna carry you as far as you could potentially carry the company. You enclose yourself into this kiddie pool and I personally, well, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say we'll guarantee, but the universe will guarantee that a corporate shark, a corporate cowboy will find your bitch ass in that kiddie pool. <laughs> the corporate cowboys are always hungry. We see motherfuckers acting like bottlenecks inside of corporate, inside of the hierarchy, inside of the flow of information, inside of, inside of the flow of resources for, for corporate departments. We see motherfuckers playing bottleneck, playing gatekeeper. Oh baby, we're in business. That's, that's pure opportunity. That's, that's, that's milk and honey. That's the land of milk and honey. And it's not, it's not a lot, it's not a lot. The land of milk and honey is inside of the head of the motherfucker who, who believes that they're in control, who believes that, that, they're, that, they're getting, <laughs> that they're the one getting serviced, who believes that they, don't, that they don't deserve, that they don't require to service anybody else, that they don't require to provide service. Just the motherfuckers getting serviced. The land of milk and honey is inside of that motherfucker's skull. Male or female. That's right. Bitches could get it too. I'm just trying to break into that. I'm just trying to break into that land of milk and honey. I'm trying to see what they see. And if I have to do it literally, if I have to do it, hold on, hold on. Because <laughs> I want to make it sound like, because I'm not, I'm not trying to cave it in, right? I'm just trying to like explode it in a sense where it doesn't sound so visually graphic, like in a, in a meta philosophical sense. I, w- I want to see, <laughs> I want to see what they're thinking about. There you go. Hey, I just want to see what they're thinking about. <laughs> Woo! Literally. And it's fun, man. It's fun. Man, it's so much fun. Right now in the in the courses that we're taking. Um, there's a there's a lot of folks. I mean, it's like it's like every school. It's like every school. There's a and it's like every workplace. There's just those who are floating by, who don't know what they want to do, who don't know what they want out of life, who uh, who believe that that you know, this this grade or this class or this school or this year or this job, this position, this title is just the next step, just the next step to whatever comes next. They really do believe in like the, in the, in the procession of life that they've been sold on. They've really been sold on this procession of life. Like you wake up, 
you fucking, I don't know, suffer in the human condition, and then you go to sleep just to wake up and repeat it again. <laughs> Fuck that. Uh, when I was in community college, man, uh, open door policy is, is open door policy is so easy to to become a success on, to become successful with, to implement productively. I sometimes I wonder. I really do wonder how do companies fuck it up so much. And again, if, if any company representatives are, are hearing this episode and, um, and they know how corporate gets down, they know how their company gets down, they're not ashamed a, a or, I guess, bashful of using vulgar language, pass this episode on to, on to your, onto your coworker, onto your manager even. Or if you have... If, if you need, what is it, an organizational audit, I've conducted some of those, plenty of those. Um, if you need an organizational audit on just what the hierarchy within your organization looks like, on, on what the culture is achieving in relation to what the, what the organizational culture uh, set, set out to, to do, it's, it's really as simple as just comparing, comparing what the mission statement says with the mission statement and bylaws say, which is policy, compare that to what's actually happening with inside of, what's actually happening within the organization, that's practice. And if there is a divide, if there is some kind of disparity, if there is a difference, if there's a difference between the two, somebody somewhere is fucking up. And yeah, there's been occasions where the whole organization has been fucking up. Why? Because <clears throat> the founders are all gone. The old vanguard is all gone. Like folks who like really believed in uh, the spirit and the mission statement of the organization as it first started. All those motherfuckers are gone. So you got new age, postmodern, uh, um, just watered down, watered down progressives, bro. That's, that's, that's what's going on right now. Like progressive should mean forward, but progressive now just means continuance. It means more of the same. But these watered down progressives, fucking, they like to think that they're extreme, but they aren't shit. <laughs> and, and they're driving their own company to the ground. I'm hearing more and more about this. Go woke, go broke, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> They're just further segmenting the market into more target demographics, further and further segmenting it, not, not actually creating markets, just segmenting the shit that's already there. Wow, it's fucking, yeah, I mean, it's from fucking top to bottom. <laughs> it's not just human resources. It's not just the executive. It's not, it's not just management. It could be the whole fucking thing. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes, Sometimes you have to be the neutron bomb. <laughs> Sometimes I have to be the neutron bomb. <laughs> oh, shit. <clears throat> this episode is not sponsored by any corporate sponsors. If you would like to, feel free to uh, send us something. Um, letting us know that you would like to uh, advertise um, obviously, examine yourself, take a look into yourself, fucking reflect on whatever organization you work for, whatever organization you represent. Reflect on what the fuck it is you want out of life before coming to me with some bullshit. If it's something that's gonna help others, if it's something that's, uh, that's made in the US, <laughs> if it's something that's creating jobs and opportunities here, then yeah, I mean, by all means, let me know. DM us or email by letter even, snail mail, P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 95742. Again, that's P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, 95742.
You want to um, shoot us a dollar, shoot us five, send us a check, do it, do it, do it, uh, I don't know, fucking a subscription monthly. Do that on Patreon. You'll find us on Patreon, uh, Corporate Cowboys Podcast, also Venmo. If you want to send something directly, uh, that's um, the handle is at Alex underscore Coco for Corporate Cowboys. That's at underscore Coco for Corporate Cowboys. Uh, PayPal dot me slash corporate cowboys again this is this is coming to me directly and i get that um i get i have a lot on my plate dude i fucking get it um (laughs) cash app if you want to cash app uh feel free to send us uh your life savings that's dollar sign corporate cowboys on cash app and on most every one of those apps, I'm going by Alex. I got my first, my title, and then Alex, and my last. Um, but by all means, I understand that I have a ton on my fucking plate. And really, um, what I'm what I'm worried about is how I'm going to eat it all. So by Taking donations, I'll be able to buy um, <clears throat> silverware and utensils. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Nah, you know, just guns and knives and licenses. Because uh, in the future, I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding. It's gonna, there's gonna be filing fees and forms, and I'm gonna be dealing with a lot of uh, legal associates and. Um, getting things off the ground getting getting the ball rolling i'd like to start a nonprofit potentially a foundation or a trust of some kind here in the beautiful state of gold in the golden state <clears throat> and um, make the golden state gold again because yo there's a milk and honey Milk and honey abound. <clears throat> but it's not being created. Like I said, it's being segmented. It's being, um, yeah, it's being segmented. It's being hyper-segmented and targeted. They aren't creating anything anymore. Fucking government? <laughs> government now? Not creating shit anymore. They're just creating more fucking headaches. But they aren't creating milk and honey they have it locked in their minds. They're gatekeeping it. And I just I just want to I just want to see what it looks like. <laughs> I I just want to see what it looks like. <laughs> oh man. That's why I have to stay in a good mood. Open door policy dictates that I treat everyone in in a in a in a kind manner. I treat everyone politely. I may not always be friendly, right? There aren't any mandates that I make friends, but it's pretty much it's pretty much commanded that we be polite and we be professional. Consummates professionals. Consummate. And that's what I strive for. Since I was young, I wanted to be ever since I was hold on. What is it? Ever since I was young. Ever since I was a kid. Ever since I was young, I always wanted to be a professional. Ever since I was, ever since I was young, <clears throat> ever since, <clears throat> ever since I was young, I was, ever since I was young, I wanted to be a professional. Nice, that one's pretty good. But yeah, uh, this this uh, episode was really just to vent a little bit. Um, it's been a couple of days since I recorded. And really, I just, I need to vent some because I don't leave um, the spot too much right now, especially with class on Zoom. So doing a lot of that, uh, just getting exercise in where I can. 
same old, same old, but homework never stops. And uh, where I can, whenever I can, I like to record something and, and just get it down so that I remember what I was talking about. Or if I have something fresh in my mind, then I could just riff on um, and, and then recall what my, my partners and I, my associates and I, um, have been discussing. And yeah, a lot of that has to do with the open door policy. The, op the open door policy really uh, stuck out uh, here recently. The open door policy, <clears throat> what the fuck, I'm fucking up. I'm getting like a, a weird accent. But it's Friday, we're going into the weekend. The open door policy really stuck out recently um, just based on um, based on, on on the history of, of the way of just on the history of workflow on the history of, of career on the history of careers on the history of workflow on the history of, of labor um, it's it's really it's really funny it's really eye-opening to be able to isolate and, and identify really dig down and analyze uh, just what culture has gotten us, just what being comfortable, what being comfortable has gotten us. And look at the state of affairs. Look at the fucking state of affairs of domestic companies compared to foreign companies. Some foreign companies out there are out for blood. And a lot of domestic companies are just are just vamping it, are just vamping it domestically, are just, are just sucking, sucking it domestically, getting their blood domestically. And, um, and even what those companies need, what those organizations need are some corporate cowboys willing to get their hands dirty, willing to get their feet wet, and um, trying to put in work internationally. I don't hear enough about that. I don't hear enough about that. Every now and then, I'll experience a phenomenon, and I'm sure others do too, where I hear a certain word or a certain phrase, and for lack of a better term, I'll call it like a trigger word, but it, like, it's not automatically triggering. It's just um, a word or a phrase or an, an image or some kind of concept Maybe it's like, um, oh, here's one. Maybe it's like uh, the finger guns. You don't see the finger guns too often where, you know, they do a little snap, point the two little finger guns at you and go, like with the wink, like, they, you, don't, you don't see that too often, right? And, um, or very, very few, very seldomly rare. Now, suppose that in the span of like, two days, I'll give you two days. I was gonna say like two hours, but uh, I don't know, that's, that's uh, bordering on schizo. <laughs> I'll give you two days, three even. Imagine in, in the span of like two days, you had three individuals do that to you. I'll give you four individuals and they're completely unrelated not random, right? But like they're uh, they're they're strangers to one another. And um, again, you know, I'm just I'm discounting conspiracy right now. I'm I'm ignoring conspiracy because that's a little schizo. Um, but yeah, over the span of two days, four individuals, maybe um, uh, one at the store, one. Yeah, one at the grocery store, one in the office, uh, and then in the afternoon, I guess, when you're headed out, you go to the bank one day, and then uh, in line, maybe it was a teller, or maybe it was uh, the, the branch, the bank manager. They see you in line, they're like, hey, what's up? And uh, I don't know, you go into like brief detail about some occurrence, and um, and they let you go with the finger, with, with the finger guns. Okay, well, take it easy, bop, bop, or whatever. And and the third, maybe was um, 
the, the, the fourth. The fourth maybe most obvious is like you're on your way home. I don't know. You, you caught an Uber or you're driving or whatever. And uh, you're at a light. And somebody's crossing the street. A pedestrian in the crosswalk. They turn to the car. Finger guns. Both of them at the same time. That one would probably trigger you. That would be triggering. Why? Because... You see this gesture so rarely, so seldomly, where it causes you to question why the setting, why the context, why the circumstance, what's the same, what's different. And I mean, in your mind, I I hope you were taking photographs. I hope you were taking mental notes of, of just who these people were, what these individuals were doing. I mean, I... I personally believe in shit like that only because I've seen it work and uh, I can't think of a story right now because I mean it happens it happens often when you're in corporate and you know what you're looking for when you know how humans work when you know what patterns when you know what patterns are exploitable it happens more often than uh, more often than you would like to admit more often than you'd care to know but if you want to know, fucking, if you want to know, do something about it. We're right here. Associates dot, hold on, associates, incorporating associates dot org. That's the site. Slide through. On Instagram, incorporating dot associates underscore IA. Venmo, that's. Alex underscore Coco, if I had that right. Did I? Yeah, Alex underscore Coco, Cash App, it's dollar sign corporate cowboys, and uh, paypal.me slash corporate cowboys. But yeah, <clears throat> when you know what you're looking for, you can tell where um, you can you can pretty much devise devise where it comes from, discern discern where it comes from, and and then plot plot on the origin. Um, it sounds so ominous when I say it like that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep it detailless. I'm gonna keep it rather vague. For now, until um, the organization is legitimized, is legitimated. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's caused me to think about, it's caused me to think about the times that it's happened to me and the times that it's happened to other folks and, and the way, the way that we're, that we're able to talk about it so nonchalantly lets me know that there's motherfuckers already out there who are looking to become corporate cowboys and just haven't haven't been oriented on um, on on what to look for on what to appreciate on how to place how to place value on, a, on how to place value on experience and maximize it. That's right, how to place value on experience, how to value your experience and maximize it. I'm gonna let you go with a, with a quick, because it's the weekend, so I'm gonna let you go with the quick, um, yeah, that, that story I was gonna tell you, because it's gonna get you mad. <laughs> I wanna get you mad before I let you go. <laughs> So I'm what, almost 30, I'm exiting my 20s. I've, damn, I feel like I should be, yeah, I should be dead twice, maybe three times. Once I got really lucky. Like, like once, like, yeah, I just got, just got really lucky. Like I, I knew what I was doing and got lucky for it. And like, it was just, it was just me rolling, this is me shooting craps, me rolling the dice, not giving a fuck what landed. <laughs> and uh, I'm here, I'm here to talk about it. So, I've uh, I've lived, I've seen, I've I've done, I've experienced, I've had, you know, things happen to me. I've 
I've um, afflicted others, I suppose you could say. And I've, I've done so in the name of being an aspiring, aspiring to be professional since I was very young, since I caught my first case, my first criminal case, which, I mean, it's, it's been sealed or expunged or whatever the fuck now. But since then, I've been aspiring to be professional since I was young. The dream was, I want to grow up and I want to wear a suit. <laughs> Look at me now. Telling others to bring suits back. I'm telling you, if we pulled somebody out of like the 50s, any race, give a fuck about the race. Anybody out of the 50s, they all had suits. They all had fucking suits. Try going, go out and buy a suit now. Nowadays, people paying, nowadays, people are paying $100, $200 for pre-torn jeans <laughs> and calling it chic, calling it fashion. Fuck out of here. Do you know how hard it is to get a suit that's heavyweight enough to conceal a gun? <laughs> I mean, I, I, get, like, I get why in the past I wore baggy clothes growing up because, I mean, the shit worked for concealment. Now that I'm older, I need, I need suits that are, I need suits that fit. I need attire. I need, I need modern day professional attire. I need to dress for the modern day professional, for the modern day workplace. Why? Because I'm, I want to be able to modernize it, not this postmodern, soft serve bullshit. <laughs> nah, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be different. My goal is to um, is to reinvigorate corporate, and and you do that by um, I want to say shaking them awake, but that doesn't seem to work. I want to do that by kicking the door in. Kicking the door in and waking them the fuck up. <coughs> <coughs> so this little story I was telling you about, I'm what, almost 30, I'm leaving my 20s now. And um, I've been through shit, I've, I've seen it all, man. If you, have, uh, if you have kids or you know somebody in high school, send them this because if you know how to clip audio, I don't know, make memes or whatever about it. Put it on vaporwave soundtracks or whatever the fuck. Fucking lo-fi it. Lo-fi that shit. Um, I was, uh, what was I? I was in the store or in the, or in the bank or somewhere. And um, ever since I was young, I, I always had issues with getting my ideas accepted. And they're great ideas, but uh, they were always contrary to the status quo. They were for improving myself and improving the organization, right? And necessarily the person that I would bring my my bright ideas to was my manager. And the manager would say, um, I mean, I'm sure folks have heard this line before. Uh, why don't you wait? Why don't you wait or go back to work? We don't pay you to think, like we don't pay you for the good ideas. Why don't you wait until you get promoted? And then when you get promoted, you can do whatever you want. And uh, this whole time, uh, my younger self is, you know, is unaware of the fact that uh, this person, this manager has just become comfortable sitting on his ass, getting told what to do, sitting on their ass, getting told what to do, and essentially have cucked their future for comfort. And... Um, yeah, your boy's just supposed to wait over here until it's their fucking turn. Until I'm like their age and have shit going for me except that I'm just next in line, which is why I think seniority is bullshit. In the workplace, seniority is counts for dick. If you don't know what you're doing, you don't know how to do it right, you don't count. You don't count. You're older, but that doesn't mean anything. You haven't done anything. You haven't gone anywhere. Where have you taken the organization? What have you done for it? <laughs> and, and, and the other day, I mean, and I, I've just gotten used to, uh, to hearing that now that I'm, you know, I've, I've, I've lived through it. I've lived through it. I get why younger, why younger folks are mad. I mean, I, 
I grew up pretty mad. Ask anybody. I always had a rather serious demeanor. If I wasn't joking, I was. If I wasn't joking, I was. I was serious. I suppose, like anybody else, I caught myself thinking that. Well, okay, if you're not joking, then no, you are serious. But, um. Obviously, my my attitude was uh, towards people who wouldn't, who wouldn't consider even good ideas. People who wouldn't consider good ideas, I, I already had it in my mind that they were no good. They weren't anyone I wanted to associate with. They weren't anyone I wanted to keep around. If I was going to contract them, it's just to have them do their job. Just expendable, useful idiots. Why? Because they're not working to improve. They're just working to take orders. Motherfuckers who, who, who don't count for life. Just Just can be counted on for death, pretty much. Can be counted on to die, not even for death, because you can count on motherfuckers for death and they come through clean. But these motherfuckers just serve to die. They're just fucking, it's cattle. They're, they're, they're cattle. You, you, have to be, you have to be corporate cowboys to the cattle, right? You have to know how to herd them. You have to know, you, you have to know how, to, how, how, to, how to drive them. And I spent my younger, I spent my youth, man. I spent my youth trying to figure out how to be heard, how to get listened, how to, how to be um, validated. I mean, I didn't need the validation. I just needed to be legitimized. I needed to, I, I don't, I don't want to say authority. I, I don't want the authority. I don't want the fucking target that comes with me. Like, you want to be an executive? Go be an executive. I'd rather be a corporate cowboy. If you don't do your work as an executive, who's going to tell me I'm not doing my work as a cowboy? You feel me? Who's, who is going to fucking check me when I know where to find you? <laughs> who's going to check me? Come through. <clears throat> but the other day I was, um, I was in line and I, I wasn't even... Like this one, this really was triggering because I spent my whole life, you know, having the good manners, being cordial. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Please and thank you. Being kind and considerate, courteous, always professional, consummate, consummate professional. Even even people I had uh, issues with and were addressed. I always did so professionally. Even motherfuckers who, who got, even motherfuckers you have to clip, you have to be nice to. So I hear, you have to do so nicely. Why? Because you're not sending them to hell. Like, you're sending them wherever the fuck they go to after they're gone. And then they figure it out when they get there. <laughs> All you're doing is just facilitating. So I hear. Um, I was in line. I, I, it had to have been groceries because I was, you know, in my wallet taking a credit card out or whatever. And, um, and, um, if we we're completing a transaction, you see, I, I don't remember the exact circumstances, but I know how I felt. You know how they say, like, you won't remember a person's name or what they said, but you'll remember how they made you feel kind of thing. Right. I, I remember how I felt. I don't even remember what the guy, what the person looked like, if they're a guy or a girl or what the fuck we were doing. But I know I was in line. We were moving. They were conducting transactions. It had to have been something retail oriented, uh, uh, retail related. And I was paying for something or, or, or I, was, I was doing something where it was just my turn to interact with them. And then on my way out, um, they called me sir. And I've never been called sir in, in the context, in the, in the circumstance in which I was in there in, in the retail. Like I've been called sir on the job. I've been, you know, I've been, I've been a manager. I've been a leader. I've played support roles also. I've, I've done it all. And I've been called sir. I've called people, other folks, sir. It's just being, you know, it's just being cordial. It's just being, uh, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's just being cordial. It's being professional. 
But in this instance, when I was called sir, I felt older because I hadn't done anything to be called sir. I hadn't earned it. I hadn't deserved it. I wasn't, we weren't addressing one another and imparting on each other uh, information. We weren't exchanging anything. Any, we weren't exchanging anything of, of substance. We weren't exchanging anything of substance for them to call me sir. And when they called me sir, I got so mad at life inside internally and like I, I don't know internally i was like screaming internally i wanted to, to you know to put word to you know just to shoot some shit i don't know stab somebody i wanted to pull somebody out of the fucking knife like i wanted to be in the zone i wanted to put in work I, ne- I needed i needed an outlet i wanted to explode explode i needed some kind of some outlet but obviously i mean i'm like up, up top, superficially, I'm smiling. I'm like, hey, thanks. Have a nice one. Have a nice evening, you too. And I head out. But when they called me sir, I came to realize that growing old means nothing. Means shit. Because we've grown accustomed to just respecting our elders, even when they don't deserve it. In that instance, like, yeah, I mean, it's nice that they called me sir, but did I deserve it? Did I require the recognition? Like, I, I don't know if, if I'm wording it correctly, if I'm phrasing it right to evoke the emotion that I need. I mean, to evoke the emotion that I'm looking for. But when they said it, it reminded me of all the times that older people take it for granted that we call them ma'am or sir and feel like they can stop being good. They can stop improving because they've attained this fucking status of being old. Don't, don't grunt. Don't fucking gasp. Unless it's for like a bit, unless you're actually walking something out, don't fucking don't fucking give me no emotions, dog. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. <clears throat> but that's what it caused me to believe. That's what it caused me to realize. That growing old, it, you're just another year closer to the grave. And anybody can push you into that bitch. Anyone can push you into that bitch and call you sir while they do it. <laughs> call you ma'am while they do it. So, fuck it. You don't even have to send this to your teenage son or your teenage daughter if they're looking to get into corporate. You don't have, you know, send it to somebody who's older. Send it to to, to some piece of shit that isn't doing anything with their life anymore, who just loves to sit and be comfortable on the job, obviously. If they've retired, leave those motherfuckers alone. I mean, I can handle them. I might be going, I'm, I might be uh, doing something with the elder community later on also. Stay tuned. But folks who are like in high school, who are anxious to, to buck the system, to get out from up under authoritarian regimes or whatever the fuck, Tell them to get a job. Tell them to get a job. Jump into that bitch feet first and just get experience in corporate. That's all they need. They just need to get in. They just need to get in and they just need to see what it looks like. (laughs) They just need to see what it looks like when they bust their first grape. That's all they need. That's all they need to see. They need to see what the inner workings of corporate looks like, what the fuck is waiting for them on the other side of that brick wall. What the fuck is waiting for them on the other side of that orientation, that orientation week, the orientation month? They just need to see what's on the other side of that probationary period. That's all. That's all. Before they realize either A, something is fucked up here and I need help, or B, I got to change some things. That's some corporate cowboy shit.